In today's video, we are creating a fun mixed reality experience where you can shoot projectiles from your controllers and the black hole spawned randomly in your room will try to draw them inwards. Since we are building this for the MetaQuest devices, there are certain limitations. And that is, we can use only the plane detection feature to detect horizontal and vertical planes of the scene model that's stored in your headset. If your headset does not have a scene model, then this experience will not work for you. So make sure to create one before you start testing. The other limitation is that we cannot use Unity's play mode to test our scene using Link. The app has to be built onto our headset and only then we'll be able to test it. I'm sure as the time passes by, the SDK will improve and all these limitations will slowly go away. With that being said, let's get started. Let's start by creating a new project. I'm using the editor version 2022.3.13 F1 LTS and I'm using 3D Core Render Pipeline. Give your project a name and create the project. Once you have your project open, click on Windows Package Manager. Inside Unity Registry, search for XR Interaction Toolkit and install it. While installing, you'll get a pop-up warning saying that a new info system is found and if you'd like to enable the backend for it. Click on yes. Now this is going to restart Unity. Once Unity reopens, here you'll notice that an older version of XR Interaction Toolkit has been installed. To install the latest version, copy the text that is here, which is com.unity.xr.interaction.bufit. Click on the plus symbol, click on add packages by name, paste it here and click on add. Once the latest package of XR Interaction Toolkit has been installed, search for AR Foundation and install that package as well. Once that's done, Look for the OpenXR plugin package and install it. And finally, we need the Unity OpenXR meta package, which you can get by clicking on this plus symbol. Click on add package by name and type com.unity.xr.meta hyphen OpenXR and click on add. With that, we have all the packages that we need. Now to set up our project, go inside file, build settings, select Android and switch the platform. Next, click on player settings. Feel free to change the company name and inside the Android tab under the other settings, make sure the color space is set to linear, uncheck auto graphics API, scroll down and change the minimum API level to Android 10, change the scripting backend from Mono to IL to CVP and check ARM64. Then select XR plugin management and inside the Android tab, check open XR and check MetaQuest feature group. Next, select open XR and here we need to add interaction profiles. So first we can add MetaQuest Touch Pro controller profile and Oculus Touch controller profile. Here make sure to select all the Quest features as well. Here you might notice a warning. You can click on that and it will take you to the project validation tool. Now if there are any settings that we have missed, we can fix it by clicking on fix all. Now if you're using the universal render pipeline, there's some additional steps that you'll have to follow, such as disabling the terrain holes, disabling HDR, disabling uh, post-processing, and setting the intermediate texture to auto. I will leave a link for this documentation in the description below. All right, so with that, we have set up our project. Now, before we set up our scene, go inside Windows, Package Manager, select XR Interaction Toolkit, click on the Samples tab and import the starter assets, import Hand Interaction Demo and import AR Starter Assets as well. Once you have all the samples imported, go back to the project settings and inside Project Validation Tool, you'll see that there are some more fixes that have to be done. All you need to do is click on fix all. Now to set up the scene, close these windows, select the main camera and delete it. In your project window, search for XR origin, select XR origin XR rig and add it to your scene. Now to enable pass through, open its child object, open camera offset, select the main camera, set the clear flags to solid color, select the background color and set the RGB values to 000, set the alpha value to zero as well. Then scroll all the way down and click on add component and add the component AR camera manager. Along with this, add the AR camera background as well. And there's one last thing to do here and that's to right click in your hierarchy, select XR and add AR session. Now if we save this scene, click on file, build settings, add the open scene. Make sure you have connected your device using the uh, USB cable and click on build and run. You'll be able to see your physical world. Now to add plane detection, select the XR origin, scroll down, add a component called AR Plane Manager. Now this requires a plane prefab. We can create that by right clicking in your hierarchy, select XR and select AR default plane. Now this comes along with the AR Plane and AR Plane Mesh Visualizer component, which are responsible for creating the planes and visualizing it. 
Now the visualizer adds the material that we have here. Currently it's debug plane. Now we're going to change that. So in your asset folder, right click and let's create a new material. Let's call this as plane material. Select the rendering mode and change it to transparent and add a color. I like the color blue. So I'm going to set it somewhere over here like this and set the alpha all the way down to 25. Now this is up to you. You can change the values and see what suits you the best. And then select the AR default plane and add the material that we created right now. Now this also comes with a line renderer. Now this is going to act as the edges of your planes. So the color is black right now. I like to be, uh, I'd like to make this blue as well. So I'm going to select it somewhere here like this. I don't want it to be a gradient. So I'm going to delete this here. All right. So we have the AR default plane. Now we need to convert it into a prefab. So let's go ahead and create a new folder called as prefabs. Select the AR default plane, drag and drop it inside here and delete it from here. Select the XR origin, scroll down and now we can add the plane prefab. So at this stage, if you save your scene, click on file, build settings, connect your headset and click on build and run. You'll be able to see that it generates horizontal and vertical planes on top of your real world. Now remember that it's using the scene model that's already stored inside your headset. So if you don't have one, you'll not be able to see any planes. So make sure to create the scene model first. To create a mixed reality experience, we're going to make use of this script called as spawn objects on plane, which you can download from the link provided in the description below. Now, this is a generic script that I came up with, which will help you spawn different objects on top of different surfaces. But how do we know which AR plane belongs to which surface? Well, if you check out the Unity's documentation, we can make use of AR Foundation's plane classification to see which AR plane belongs to which surface. So to start with, we have a structure called as spawn data with three different variables. The first one is a plane classification, which will store the label of your choice. And then the spawn object, which is going to be the prefab that you'd like to spawn on that particular label or surface and spawn amount, which is going to be the number of times you'd like to spawn the prefab on that particular surface. So first we're going to declare a list of spawn data because you might want to spawn different objects on top of different surfaces. And then we want to reference the plane manager as well. On enable, we want to subscribe to the plane managers, planes changed action, and on disable, we want to unsubscribe. When the planes changed action gets invoked, it's going to call the spawn objects on plane method and pass in an argument of type AR plane changed event args. Now we can use of these arguments to see the list of planes that have been added. And once we have the list, we can go through each of the plane and we can go through each of the item inside the spawning data, see which of the plane classification matches the plane classification of the item. And if it does not match, then we're going to continue. However, if it matches, then we are going to spawn the object on top of that surface. But we, we don't want to spawn the object on one single point. We want to randomize it. And so for each of the object to be spawned, we're going to find a random position and then instantiate it. So here we are in Unity. Let's create an empty game object, then call it as object spawner. Add the spawn object on plane component to this. And let's create a list of items that we'd like to spawn on a particular surface. To so start with, let's select wall. We'll add the spawn object later on and set this spawn amount to one. Then probably spawn an object on the floor. We'll spawn one object on the ceiling and one object on the table. We'll leave the rest of them as it is. So this is my preference. Uh, you can set as per how you want it to be. And then we need to add spawn objects for each one of them. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it really simple and spawn the same object for all the walls, floor, ceiling and table. However, you can be creative and probably spawn paintings on walls, probably a mat on floor, some kind of cloud asset on the ceiling and probably a toy on table. So that's up to you. So let's create a spawn object. Right click, create a 3D object queue. Let us scale it down to 0.2 on X axis, 0.04 on Y and 0.2 in the Z axis. Let's change its material. So I'm going to select unlit black. Next, in the Unity's asset store, search for an asset called dark singularity and import it into Unity. Once you have the asset imported, open this folder, open prefabs, and you'll find the dark singularity prefab, which you can select and drag and drop it inside the queue. Reset its position in Y and Z direction to zero and set its rotation to minus 90 in the X direction. Open its child object, select moon, scroll all the way down, select renderer and change its alignment from view to local and uncheck allow road. Let's do the same for aura, select renderer, and change its alignment to local, uncheck allow roll and scroll all the way up and we want to reset the rotation back to zero. Select round and we'll do the same once again. Next, select pull trigger. 
here we want the sphere collider to be around 1.5 so this is going to be 1.5 meter so within that area if you have any object that's going to get pulled inside this cube and the core we want to set its radius as 0.25 and this whenever the object touches it goes inside this core it's going to get deactivated or destroyed whatever you'd like to do there's one small change that i'd like to make to the script that comes along with the package and that is the singularity one so right now you can see that the gravity pull is set to 150 so if there are objects close by then it could lead to some issues like this so to avoid that let's open the singularity script and in this script while adding force to the rigid body instead of multiplying it with gravity pull directly we'll replace it with a statement called random dot range 50 comma gravity pull so this will give a random value between 50 and 150 hence each object that's getting spawned will have a different value and you'll no longer face that issue so save the scene and let's go back into unity here select the cube and rename it as black hole Go inside asset folder, select the black hole and drag and drop it inside the prefab folder and make sure to delete it from your hierarchy as well. Select the object spawner and inside spawn object, we're going to add black hole for each one of them. This also needs a reference to the AR plane manager, which is there in the XR origin. So you can select it and drag and drop it in here like this. Now for the last part, we need another script called as object shooter. Once again, you can download this script from the link provided in the description below. Now this script references to an input action property. In our case, it's going to be the controller trigger. Now, once the trigger has been pressed, it's going to shoot a projectile based on the specified force. So here we are back in Unity. Let's create a projectile prefab by selecting 3D object sphere. Rename this as projectile. Reset its position to zero in all the direction and scale it down to 0.1 as well. I'd like to change its material to red color. Feel free to use any other material of your choice. And then scroll all the way down and add a component called as singularity pullable. Along with this, it automatically adds the rigid body. Make sure to uncheck gravity. Then select the projectile and drag and drop it inside the prefabs folder and delete it from your hierarchy. Next, open the XR origin, select the left controller and right controller and add the object shooter component. This needs a projectile prefab which we created just now and the force amount can be 8. And then select the left controller, scroll all the way down and here we want to use a reference and the reference is going to be left interaction activate. Similarly, select the right controller and let us use the action right interaction activate. And that's it. Now you can save your scene, click on file, build settings. Make sure you're connected your device to your laptop or machine. Click on build and run. Let's create a new folder called as grills. Give your APK a name and click on save. And here you can see that I'm able to shoot the projectiles from my controllers. These projectiles are interacting with my room and the randomly spawned black holes are interacting with these projectiles. This was really fun and there are so many things that you can do to make this better. I've gone ahead and added some more functionalities like spawning the black holes with your left controller but I'll leave this as a challenge for you to implement. Maybe you can share your result with us on LinkedIn. Now this experience just uses the plane detection feature. However, if you want to build a more realistic mixed reality experience, then you should definitely check out this video over here. All right, so that's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.